my word for you today really is taken out of uh, the book of John, chapter 16, verse 13. The Bible says, How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things that are to come. Amen. I think that something happens to us when we are long-time believers. I, for example, grew up in the church. I'm a preacher's kid. I know a lot of scriptures. I've gone to a lot of church services in my day. And sometimes what happens when we are well-churched and well-seasoned in the activity of coming and going to church is that we become desensitized to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. We sometimes become desensitized also because life is real. And life throws at us things that are not always pleasant. And so in addition to being long time coming to church and knowing the word and all of that, sometimes the fact that we are experiencing life can cause us to be desensitized because even though the pastor keeps telling us that God is good, sometimes the things that we are experiencing in our day-to-day -day lives are bad. Can I get some witnesses? Bad stuff. Stuff like sickness and disease, stuff like divorce and breaking of long-time relationships, stuff like a guy breaking your heart when you thought you were about to get married, stuff like long-standing friendships going sour, stuff, life is full of stuff. And if we're not careful, sometimes the stuff of life gets so into our hearts that we can no longer receive the truth of God's word which is that God is good all the time. That in all circumstances, God is good. And so I think God just wants to remind us today that he has given us more than what we have tapped into to deal with all of the stuff of life, amen? I know some of you might be sitting here dealing with some real stuff of life. Financially, things may be difficult. Spiritually, you may be feeling oppressed. There are things that could be better. But I think God wants to remind you of one specific thing. That he thought ahead to this time, to the year 2020. Thousands of years ago, he thought ahead to this time. And he gave you a secret weapon called the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. See, many of us are believers. We've accepted that God is real and that the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is real. But Jesus said something very peculiar in this scripture that we have just read. He said basically that it is in your interest that I leave. Because when I leave, I will give you a, a better thing. And that better thing is the Holy Spirit. The Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as a comforter. And more than that, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And God knows we all need some truth. God knows we all need some truth. Because daily, things are speaking to us. You read magazines and they speak to you about what you should look like, what size you should be, what color your skin should be, what size dress you should wear. But the truth is, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God took his time and you are exactly who you need to be. That's right. God knows we need some truth. Because sometimes people don't see the potential that you have. And so they break off relationship with you and cause you to think that you are dejected and nobody wants me and nobody loves me. But the Spirit reminds us of the truth, which is that because of you, God doesn't sleep. You are the apple of his eye. That's right. And you are accepted in the beloved. Amen. See, there is the belief that Jesus paid the Christ paid the price for all your sins. But then there is walking in wholeness and victory, which only happens when we befriend the Spirit. See, God gave us a great weapon, a great partner in the Spirit of God. The Bible says the Spirit will show us all truth. But in addition to that, the Spirit of God will show us things to come. You see, God wants us to have the upper hand. God wants us to walk in divine victory. And part of how you get victory is relying on the Spirit of God to show you what is to come. Mm -hmm. 
And this has been a great benefit in my own life, in my own professional journey, in my own walk with friends. Sometimes I will pray and say, God, who is this person to me? And sometimes I'll have a dream where God begins to show me specific things about people that I have no other way of having come to know. How many of you can witness to that? Sometimes God just puts on your heart that you have to go to a specific place at a specific time. Sometimes God will warn you that this person is no good for you. That when you befriend the spirit, you will see that the spirit does more than just pat you on the back and make you assured that God is with you. The spirit delivers you from trouble. So those of you who find yourselves in difficult times, in relationships that may not be working out, may I commend to you the spirit that instead of calling up your girlfriend or calling up your best friend from college to talk through a matter, that you walk in the spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I know you know all things. I know you know all truth about me. You know my life and my times. You know my future, you know my past. You know who's good for me. You know what's good for me. So Holy Spirit, your word says that you will show me the things that are to come. So Spirit of God, lead me and show me what's to come. Amen. See, some of us haven't befriended the Spirit. And so we're walking as saved, but not victorious. And God wants us to move from just being saved to being victorious. And as a victorious believer, you walk in victory when you rely on the Spirit. Amen. Befriend the Spirit. Right. Allow the Spirit to be your business partner. The Holy Spirit, I give you the CEO-ship of my business. You are more than just an invited guest. You are the boss. I put you in charge. When you relinquish your marriage to the Spirit, when you say, Lord, I'm crazy, he's crazy, we're all crazy, but if you know all things. You know how to make this union work. You know how to help me live beyond my emotions. You know how to help me so that I don't destroy the thing that you have given to me as a gift. Amen? Amen. Befriend the spirit. Because in a season like this, when we've become not just a new year, but a new decade, God is looking for those who will be willing and obedient. This is scripture. The scripture says, if you will be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Mm -hmm. But willingness and obedience through the spirit. Wow. Obedient to who? The spirit's leading. Because look, God knows that there's just so much happening and we are in a season of information overload. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, people are talking. You go on Twitter, you go on Instagram, and the, what's happening in this time, unfortunately, is that there is a form of godliness which has no power. There are people who are saying lots of wise sayings, but God is calling us back to his truth, which is found in his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So for some of you, it may mean that you may need to go on a bit of a media fast. So that you can just have the wherewithal to listen wholeheartedly to the Spirit. God is always talking. He, in fact, He's looking. He is desperate to tell you stuff. And I find that the more I rely, the more I just tune in and say, Lord, speak. The more somehow, some way, God is maneuvering me into a path of success and victory. Amen. And that, I believe, is what God wants us to invest our time in yes. these days. Amen. This is a spiritual time. And in fact, there are people who are calling on other gods. There are people who are, in, are chanting as we speak, chanting against your success. Many of us come from idol worship in our family histories. And so we may look polished and, and together today, but there are things that are speaking against our destinies. There are things that our forefathers did that brought us into covenants that we know nothing about. There are things that are just speaking. And that's why in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul speaking to one of the churches, he said, in this world there are many voices, and each of them has significance. And our job is to key in to the voice of the Spirit. 
Our job as New Testament believers is to receive the finished works of Jesus, which saves us, but to also receive the partnership of the Spirit. That's where victory is found. Amen. So today is just a reminder that God wants more than just for you to be saved so that when you die, you go to heaven. He wants you to have victory in this life. He wants every part of you to show forth the praises of he who has called you out of darkness into his glorious light. Amen. And showing forth his praises means that every part of your life should reek of success. In the New Testament, the Bible says that we are supposed to be a sweet smelling savor. Yes, right. And our lives, in fact, the whole, all of creation is groaning, waiting for you and I to manifest. Because when we manifest, success and victory comes to those who need it the most. Amen. And when you don't become who God has called you to be, there are so many lives that are dependent on you. So many people whose, whose success and progress is based on you waking up to who God has called you to be. When we look at the life of Jesus, Jesus had some profound sayings. He said, I have the power to lay down my life and I have power to take it up again. This is a commandment I received from my father. What commandment have you received from your father? There are certain things that God will tell nobody but you. He won't tell it to a pastor. He won't tell it to a prophet. He wants to speak it to you. And I think he wants to speak it to you because some of it is so unbelievable that if he showed it, told it to anybody else, they wouldn't believe it. They wouldn't have the confidence to tell you the goodness that God has ahead of you. And I'm speaking to someone who needs to hear this today, that your life is more than just being saved. God wants you to be victorious. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants us to be victorious. God wants us to befriend the Spirit of God. And the last thing that I'll say, you know, the Bible says the Spirit of God will show us what's to come. And I want to encourage you to make this a perpetual prayer topic in this year. Look, when you are on the, the verge of greatness, when you're on the verge of things that, like a turnaround, that's what this year is for many of us. Oftentimes, the enemy will, will try and block your path. And that's why in the Old Testament, the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times and the seasons. See, some of you are in a time and a season where God is calling you out and asking you to retreat because he needs to work on you, needs to work some things out of you. But in this time, you are the most distracted that you've ever been. Mm -hmm. You're surrounded by people who are just taking your time, taking your energy, mm -hmm. and sapping your strength. And I think God is trying to get many of us our attention. Because in a season like this, when we look at the, the invalid who was by the, the gate called Beautiful, and once a year, the angel would come and stir up the waters, he was always out of time and out of season. And part of how the enemy was stealing from him is by self-doubt, making him feel like, oh, I needed somebody else to help me get into the pool. But God wants to remind some of us that he is all you need. And if you befriend the spirit of God, this will be a year of uncommon victory. Amen? Amen. Befriend the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. The spirit wants to show you what's to come. And I know this may sound spooky to some of you, but it's the truth. How can you walk in a world where there's so much evil, where there's so, much, so many voices speaking against your destiny and not have a voice? The Bible promises us when we move to the right or to the left, we will hear his voice saying, this is the way, walk in it. Without that assurance, you cannot fulfill the fullness of who God has called you to be. Befriend the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit should be your best friend. Should be your best partner. Before you get on a phone and dial a person, you first of all close and put everything off and say, Spirit, what, what is happening? And in fact, 
the Apostle Paul teaches us another principle. He said, now therefore we know nobody after the flesh. In fact, all of your relationships need to be covered by the Spirit. God, I, I sometimes I write down a list of all of the people in my life and just pray. I said, Lord, anybody in my life that you have not purposed to be there, I give you the permission to remove them in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. And when you start praying like this, you may find that you've been trying to get up, catch up and have coffee for a while, but it's not working out. You may find that people that you thought were the best for you are actually on assignment to, to distract you from purpose. Amen. I would encourage you to befriend the Spirit. Amen. That Lord, this time, this, you know, in, in, as we were coming into the new year, I made down a list of all of the people in my life and just began to pray that, Lord, these are the people that I believe you brought me into a covenant relationship with. And Lord, in this season, show me how to walk with them. Show me, let my relationships be no more and no less than what you have purposed. Because when we walk on our own understanding, when all you are limited to is by these five senses, hear, smell, touch, feel, when all you have are emotions, you are in trouble, my friend. God wants me to remind you that you've got more available to you than you are making use of. Wow. The Spirit of God should be your best friend. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God should be your business partner. The Spirit, wow. the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, and oftentimes we accept the first two with ease, but we struggle to befriend the Spirit. Mm -hmm. God wants a relationship with each of us that's deeper than what we currently have. And the Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Mm -hmm. No one enters but through this door. Mm -hmm. But the reminder I'm giving you this morning is that you have more than a door you have access to a whole kingdom that has resources that you need to be tapping into. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that major resource is the Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit. So some of you may be asking, so how do I, how do, I do this thing? Do I just... Uh, <laughs> and I, I would encourage you to just shut stuff off. Put it to the test this week. Shut off your phone. No unnecessary... Netflix, TV, you know, say, Lord, this woman's talking about the Spirit. I don't know what that is. But Lord, I want your visitation. Holy Spirit, visit me. Holy Spirit, talk to me. Holy Spirit, and, and, I, and I trust that if you are willing, the Spirit will begin to move in your life. All you need is a willingness. Once you've accepted God, the, the sacrifice of Jesus, you have the right. And that's why the Bible says, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And he gives us access to the kingdom through the Spirit. Befriend the Spirit. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we stand up right now and just invite the Holy Spirit to, to take over our lives?